in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. I want to say a good morning to all of you, and welcome to the Sunday of the Passion of the Lord. And we come before God, our Father, who loves us and has given us his life to be our own life. And so in this Mass, we pray for Carol Callen, and he's been requested by Jerry Murphy. The Mass is for Carol Callen, requested by Jerry Murphy. As we come before God, we journey with the Lord in his suffering. The beginning of Holy Week. Let me explain here. The liturgy this morning is going to be different because there will be no palms, there will be no procession. So we're going to go straight to the liturgy of the Mass. So we're going to skip all the preliminaries, the gospel before the procession, the gospel at the procession, and all that we're going to skip because. We don't have a crowd. It's just me here and those of you joining from wherever you are. So my dear friends in Christ, let us call to mind our sins, unite ourselves with the passion of the Lord, and so prepare ourselves for this match. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thought and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, Ever living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will arouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I give my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pluck my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and speeding. The Lord is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial son. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God. My God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me. They mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. 
He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me, O my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? A second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, <clears throat> taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My dear friends, the Lord is with you. The passion of the Lord, according to Matthew. Jesus stood before the governor, Pontius Pilate, who questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So, when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus, called the Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message, Have nothing to do with the righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus, God the Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But Pilate said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, 
he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had had Jesus scourged, he handed him to the crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thumbs, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots, and they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the reading charge against him, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by revived him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. So he is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let God deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait. Let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. Wherever you are, if you can, please kneel. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after their resurrection, they entered <clears throat> the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, and they said, Truly, this was the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends, good morning to you again. Today we enter the period that we call Holy Week. 
Every week in our lives, every day, every second is holy because every time belongs to God. We call this Holy Week because it's the week of the Passion of Jesus from Thursday until Sunday when he was arrested and we put ourselves, we are drawn more into the life and suffering of Christ. And the whole purpose of that is that we may purify ourselves of every sin and go deeper into the ultimate question, the meaning of life. The whole point of being a Christian is to ask ourselves, when I take my last breath, when I die, what happens to my soul? And that is why we are called <clears throat> to be holy. And so the reason we reflect on the passion of the Lord is to see not so much his suffering for the sake of the suffering, but what that suffering means for us. Jesus did not come to preach a sweet Christianity. He did not bring a religion of comfort and pleasure and respite. He did not come to, <clears throat> to preach suffering. He came to preach holiness. He did not come to give us suffering. And he did not come to give us a life of comfort either. He just came to teach us how to be holy. However, being holy necessarily implies suffering sometimes, if not most of the time. And so when we reflect on the passion of Jesus, it is to help us embrace righteousness for the sake of salvation. And when our salvation causes us pain, let us reflect on the pain of Jesus. We cannot preserve our salvation, which was won by suffering, without suffering. If we think that we will not suffer, then we cannot be part of the salvation of Jesus, because the salvation of Jesus was brought about through suffering. You cannot serve a crucified master and not expect your own self to be crucified. You cannot serve a, sovereign, a suffering Lord without expecting yourself to suffer with the Lord. As we journey in this life, we pray for comfort. We want a comfortable house. We want money so that we can live a comfortable life. We want good health. We want good homes. We want to be healthy. Yes, God gives us all that. But there are moments when to be holy necessarily causes suffering. And when that time comes, let us remember that somebody suffered to bring us salvation. And we must bear our own part of the suffering to keep the salvation that was brought to us through suffering. There was a German theologian called Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote two groundbreaking books, two books that were groundbreaking. One of the books is entitled The Cost of Discipleship. The cost of discipleship. In the second book entitled Costly Grace, Costly Grace, he says grace is not cheap because it costs somebody his life. Grace is not cheap because it costed somebody his life. I was referring to Jesus. Jesus brought grace to us at the cost of his life. Therefore, let us not waste the grace of God because it was brought to us at the price of somebody's life. But coming to the Gospel reading, let me make a few points there. Remember that Jesus was 
crucified because crucifixion was the method of getting rid of criminals. The death sentence of criminals was executed through crucifixion. So the cross was not a Christian symbol. Remember at that time Christianity had not existed. The cross was not a religious symbol. The cross was what they used for killing criminals. People were ashamed of the cross because it was used to kill criminals who were sentenced to death. Jesus was sentenced to death and was killed as a criminal. But the object of shame has become the source of our glory. The cross was an object of shame, humiliation, and embarrassment. But Jesus, through his death, he elevated the cross from being a symbol of shame to a symbol of salvation. Sometimes we see the cross as a sign of suffering. You are not wrong. This cross is a sign of suffering, but it is more a sign of glory because Jesus transformed suffering into glory. He transformed shame into honor. He transformed death into redemption. So instead of the cross being a sub, an object of shame, it has become an object of honor for those of us who believe. Instead of being an object of destruction, it became a symbol, the means through which our redemption was accomplished. And so my dear friends, as we enter this holy week, the week on which our Savior will be put on the cross, let us also embrace the crosses that our own faith will bring to us. The difficulties that we go through in the name of serving Jesus is our own passion. The pain that we go through in order to help another person, that is our cross. The hardships that we go through in order to live a righteous life, that is our own passion. That is our own suffering. May our suffering not be wasted, but may it be part of our redemption. In Jesus' name, amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We pray for the leaders of the church, that God will give them the grace to bear the pain that their offices may bring to them. And in their pain, may they continue to show us the example of keeping their faith in the midst of difficulties. For the leaders of the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for world leaders, that they may follow the example of Jesus, the suffering master, the master who suffered for his people and did not sacrifice the life of his people for his own comfort that world leaders may be able to suffer for their people rather than make their people suffer for their own advantage. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the church and the whole of Christianity that as we journey through life, we may imitate Christ in standing by righteousness even when he brings us pains and suffering. For the whole world and the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Carol Collin, for whom this Mass is offered. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the whole world at this point of the pandemic of coronavirus. We pray that the Lord will be with the world and be with all of us. May he receive the souls of those who have died. May he grant healing to those who are sick. And may he continue to protect those who have not been infected, that we may not be infected, and that this disease might be brought to an end sooner than later. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our brother Jerome Hart, that God will continue to be with him and strengthen him. We also pray for Jerome's family and his friends, that the Lord will give them strength at this difficult time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the faithful departed, particularly Augustine Oloja, my friend in Nigeria who passed on Friday, and all those who have died in recent times, that the Lord may grant them eternal rest in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of your heart, please offer your own intentions to God. Almighty God in heaven, we thank you for the gift of today. We thank you for keeping us alive. We also thank you for the many people who have recovered from the coronavirus. We give you glory for the good you do in our lives. Continue to help us to trust in you and to know that you will never abandon us. Thank you, Lord, for listening to our prayers because we ask all of them in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. to get this, pardon me. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, we will come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice on this day in your sight be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my guilt and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my dear friends in Christ, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, 
may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death was washed away, has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. If you have the book with you, I am using the first Eucharistic prayer, Eucharistic prayer 1, because of the message of the Passion of the Lord. So, if you have the book, you may want to use Eucharistic prayer for those of you who have the book. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to God, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope. And all those who hold into the truth, hand on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember your servants and all who participate in this Mass, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your holy family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, 
giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion and Resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, Command that this gift be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and the fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your sins, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not counting our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the command of our Savior, and according to the teaching of God, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, so that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress. 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the glory, the power, and honor are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My dear friends, may the peace of the Lord be with you. Please, may we extend peace to whoever is around you and to the rest of the world. Peace be with you all. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May the mingling of the body and blood of Christ bring salvation to us who receive them. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. If we were to be together, this is the time for giving us the body and blood of Christ. But because we are not able to receive Jesus in sacramental way, let us receive him now spiritually by maintaining some silence and inviting the Holy Spirit into your heart. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear friends, bow down your heads and receive the blessing for the Holy Week. Look, O oh Lord, we pray on this, your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My dear friends, we want to let you know that this Mass will continue and we are going to have Mass on Holy Thursday, the, the three the three dome, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and the Easter Vigil. But we don't want people to come in because it is not allowed because of the coronavirus. But we have selected a few persons who will attend the mass and they're gonna stay six feet apart. So they're gonna be like six people and they'll be the two priests, myself and Father Jim, we are going to be doing the Mass at St. Jude's. But please do not come. It will be live streamed. Okay? We are going to do it live streamed. 
by 5 o'clock on Thursday, 3 o'clock on Friday, and 7 p.m. for Easter Vigil. Thursday will be 5 o'clock, Friday will be 3 o'clock, Thursday will be, um, Easter Vigil will be 7 p.m. So you'll be having a live mass to be coming to you just as you participate in this mass. So the six persons who will be there have been informed and they are the only ones who will be in church and we, did, we keep everybody apart and then the two of us will also stay apart from each other and we'll do the Easter trade room Thursday, Friday and Saturday and each of those will be live and you can watch it just as you are watching this and participating now. Number two, I have a hard time talking about money, but we have to talk about it. The church needs your collections. It is through your collections that we keep the church running. So you can give online. If you go to the um, website of our parishes, there is a place for giving online. It is safe. Don't be afraid that online criminals may take your money. No, it is safe. It is run by the diocese. Is set up for each parish. So when you give your collections, your Sunday collection online, it goes straight to the account of our parishes. And so while we are in this lockdown, at least we have some money to run the church, to pay the staff and to do the things we need to do. So please go to the parish website and you will be able to make some of collection on the website. And if you want to mail your collection, through the envelope to the parish office, please continue to do that. Let us continue to keep the word in our prayers. And the good news is that more and more people are recovering. Many people are dying, yes, but those who recover are almost five times larger than those who die. Let us keep the hope alive and trust God for his blessings. Finally, This is my right hand, but you are seeing it at the left. This is my left hand, but you are seeing it at the right, because the camera is flipped. Okay, it flips. So when I came, I made the sign of the cross with my right hand, but you saw the left. So when you see the left, just know that that is the right hand, okay? All right. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Have a wonderful week, everyone.